happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, and it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way and ask questions and work on it with me or just come and chit chat. Uh, so we are continuing on the splendid sampler to quilt along tonight. We are doing the connection block. It's a six inch block here. And this is done with foundation paper piecing. And we are actually very far along the lines of the paper piecing. We are actually on our last piece. So here we are. Our last uh, piece is going to be in that new color. Got my little uh, template uh, cut out. So we are going to cut our last two pieces. We got to do two of two of these last two pieces, and then we will start putting all of the sections together. So I'm excited about that. We'll see how far we get tonight. Uh, I know we've been cutting off lately, so I have the air, the air condition on, blowing on uh, on the phone tonight. So hopefully we don't get conked out in the middle of it from it overheating. Eh, again, hoping to fix that all soon. Um, just so you guys know, I am going to be out of town again um, from Wednesday. Hold on. Okay, from Wednesday through Friday again this week. So I'm going to be visiting family again and uh, going to be visiting both my brothers and my parents uh, and uh, my sister-in-law too. So we uh, will be out of town from uh, um, Wednesday on for the rest of the week. So I may pop in uh, here and there, or maybe my brother is making that quilt that I shared with you and I, they just showed me pictures of it. I think he's putting the binding on already, guys, if you can believe it. So uh, I will maybe pop in to share that with you if he's okay with that. Uh, but otherwise, I am going to be um, gone for a little bit. Robin, yours is overheating too. Uh, so we talked to Apple and they said that they thought it was the app, but <laughs> of course everyone's going to blame everyone else. So I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to flip you guys around and uh, we'll get going here. All right. So yeah, so we will be out a little bit again this week. It has been a busy summer. I know I've been in and out a whole ton this summer. I'm sure that'll settle down a bit when, um, ooh, this is not staying, uh, when, when fall comes around. Uh, most likely. My brother has been in town the whole summer. I'm just going to press this guy again. He looks kind of flat or he needs to be flattened more. We're going to do the other one too. Uh, but my brother has been in town the entire summer and that's unusual because he uh, he's the one that works on the ski hill. So he usually travels to wherever winter is and he didn't do that this winter or well, this summer, uh, like Australia's winter. Uh, so um, he's been here in town sometimes and at my parents' house. So we have been, we have been doing a lot of, a uh, lot more visiting, which has been very, very nice. All right, this is our last fabric here. I'm gonna try and cut out my pieces from, you know, a weird blobby section. So we actually have quite a bit of this fabric. That's exciting. All right. How about right here? I'm going to just give this little area a press. So I was talking about this on Friday or on Thursday. Uh, well, with foundation paper piecing, it's important to always be aware of what your right and wrong side of the fabric is. And again, in this case, I'm using, so it's the same, a similar situation as the white fabric. There is no right or wrong side. So I have to like mentally note uh, what I'm using as the right and wrong side. And, you know, now I'm using a pattern fabric, but this again, I have the same problem because this is a batik. So it is the same. There is um, no right side and wrong side. Although, now that I'm peeking at it, it does appear that one side is slightly darker. So, huh, that's interesting. Okay, so great. I'm calling it a right and a wrong side. So 
This is gonna be the right side. This is gonna be the wrong side. I know it looks really similar, but there is, there just, there seems just a tiny variant of um, dark and light. So, all right, right side of the fabric, I'm gonna face down. That's the trick, you wanna face it down and let's get our template pieces. So I need to pay attention to what edge is the edge that is that we're sewing onto here. Okay, so this is that last line that we are attaching. So it's this top line. This top line, for sure, we need a really good straight edge. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna trim this a little bit better. So we need to cover this piece and our generous seam allowance. There we go. Thought I lost my rotary cutter for a sec. And again, you guys, we are, we've done a bunch of videos on this. We're kind of wrapping up this block a little bit. So if I'm skipping talking about some steps or if you're, you're confused, um, just go back to some of the earlier videos of, of this. I promise you it will all make sense. We are just at the cruising through state of it now. Cutting my blob. Um, I got that good straight edge on the part that's going to connect. And then all I need is a good generous uh, seam allowance around. Again, this is quite a bit, but I like not having to think too hard. <laughs> all right. So let's get our first piece. I suppose I could cut the other one out right away, but now we're already here. So I'm kind of lining up those edges that should match. And then I'm putting right sides together. So there we go. Again, remember, this is that weird one where it, it doesn't really look like there's a right and wrong side, but there is. All right, so I'm just guessing about right here. We can do kind of like a mini test. There we can even see the fabric or the paper through. So we just need it to cover that entire paper. I am going to pin it just to make sure. It's always good to do do the test, better safe than sorry. So I'm going to flip this around. We're going to do our pretend sewing. So nice to see everyone again. I know I, I was out on Friday because uh, it was the husband's and my uh, 16th wedding anniversary. So we, we actually biked to, we did a kind of almost what, what I said on Thursday that we were gonna do. All right, I got like a ton of room. I definitely did not need to cut that big of a piece, but uh, it's always nice to have a little bit extra. All right, so this, this, is, uh, this is ready to go. Let's get that second piece for our second section here. It was fun. So we did almost, um, we did almost to the plan. <laughs> the only difference is instead of a picnic, we stopped at a restaurant that was along, along the way. So we biked to the restaurant and then we kept biking to the brewery and we hung out there for like several hours. <laughs> And it, it was really funny, actually, um, when we when we got to the brewery because um, oh whoops, you guys, I did this on the wrong wrong side. Hold on. So I I matched this up to like this bottom edge, but we actually need to match this edge, this top edge. So I need a good straight seam allowance there too. So let's let's tweak that. Um, I got this the um, seam allowance on the raw, wrong, um, wrong edge there. Luckily I cut my blob big enough that I can just clean it up. But yeah, it was funny when we, when we got to the brewery <laughs> because it was, it's this cool brewery, brewery. So it's in this industrial area. Like you would never ever know it's there, but then you turn a corner and they got this whole big lawn, like in the middle of the brewery almost with one open side and that's where you kind of walk in. And then it's just like this beautiful square of lawn hidden in, you know, this industrial area. And apparently 
this is just so funny. Apparently, every family <laughs> with young kids has found this place before us, and they're like, dang, this is the perfect place to let the kids just tear off, run around this green area while we can sit and have some beers <laughs> on a Friday evening on a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, and um, they had live music and stuff, but oh my gosh, I've only been there a couple other times and it's been late, like at, at uh, their closing time really. So different crowd uh, compared to the, you know, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. crowd. It had, there were so many, like there had to be like 60 kids underneath like six years old. <laughs> And even like maybe underneath like four years old. So it was just kind of funny. So we were watching all these families and uh, there was live music and stuff. And then um, that died down a little bit once it got dark. And all right, we're fine here. I'm going to sew. And um, then it and it wasn't quite so many young families, but it was, it was just so funny because you turn the corner where, like, you, you can't see this patch of green, like, this big patch of green until you turn the corner, and then it was like, wow, it just, like, opened up to this world of, like, just kids running around everywhere. It was pretty funny. And I just was totally not expecting it because that's not how it was any of the other times uh, I was there, but... It makes such perfect sense. Like, what a perfect spot for a family to come on a on a weeknight. It was just um, you could just let the kids run everywhere. Well, the way that this bar works, it's not you don't even really go in. It's it was kind of like so it's a shape like a like a backward C, and so the road is here, and no one goes on that road because it's this industrial area. So like the sea, like the bathrooms are here and the brewery part. And then, then there's huge garage doors all along this edge. And then it's just a bar. So it was basically completely open. Um, and then the bar. And then this whole rest of the area is just a green patch. So it is just, um, it's a park basically. And they have, um, they don't, serve food but they do have food trucks are big in town so there's a food truck there so they the, the food truck was actually they had a wood fire pizza um for it <laughs> so we had just eaten otherwise we would have totally gotten some wood fire pizza but anyway pretty fun it was nice uh some seats it was so packed but uh right when we got there some seats opened up uh you know just some of these chill like Anirondack chairs, uh, those plastic ones, and uh, we just sat back and drank beers and watched everyone. It was totally fun. All right, so let's flip this up and see. All right, it's looking pretty cute there. All right, let's uh, do the other side and then we will um, Press this, and this is our last piece. This is our last little sewn piece. After this, uh, it'll be all about assembling all the pieces. We'll give that a try. Oh, you had a wood fire uh, pizza for um, a wedding. That's cute. All right, down the line here. Got a little squiggly there. All right, that is that. Let's trim. And uh, we will press this open. All right, I'm gonna zip over here. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way so we're done with all of our fabric now. Uh, now we just need to press. Oh, and I, I don't need this little template anymore either. We're done with that. Okay. Printed side down. Oh, let's finger press it first. I always like finger pressing it. 
extend that all the way. We're, we're gonna have a lot of bulk here in this corner here. So we'll just have to keep our eye on that as we go along. Okay, one crazy blob uh, that will be cut down really soon here though. All right, and then spread that. Okay. All right, there are our two pieces. So uh, all we have to do now is uh, trim around the edge there. We need our quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm gonna get my normal ruler out where I can get that quarter inch. And we'll trim. I'm not using my gloves today. I, I should. I feel like I'm racing against um, Facebook or um, my phone <laughs> today a little bit just so it doesn't kind of burn out on me again. Oh, Glennis, I see you in the chat. Um, try swiping. I think uh, if you swipe one way or the other, it reveals it reveals comments. All right. Last little trim here. Obviously, I had plenty of seam allowance here. Oh, got away on me. Time to switch that blade. All right, so there we've cut all around the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And uh, look how clean and perfect it looks. Look at the comparison, how crazy different it looks. That's literally just from trimming it up. So yay, that guy is ready. Let's do this one here. Flip it around. You know, maybe it is Facebook. If some of you guys can't see comments and stuff, maybe Facebook ran an update or something, and maybe that's why my phone's overheating too. I'll maybe I'll um uh, something to try might be completely deleting the app, uninstalling the app from the phone, and then installing it again. You'll still have all your username information if you remember your username and password. Uh, you know, even if you uninstall it, um, you'll get it back. I might try that too. For some reason that seems to solve uh, solve some Facebook comments. Well, okay, yeah, definitely. I have a nick in the blade here somewhere. So it's not, it's like skipping, skipping a thread here or there, so that's gonna be annoying. I'm gonna have to bring some blades home again. It's been a while though, it's been a while since we've switched this blade. Okay, here we go. So let's just, uh, I kind of want to lay all this out again quick here. See what we got going on. All right, we got all of our pieces now. All right, I'm just flipping it to make sure that I'm upright here. A little shaky here, sorry about that. Okay, and the A piece. All right, so we have this section that we have to sew together and then the bottom section is exactly the same. It's just rotated and you know what, I think just to keep things simple for us, so we're doing the same thing twice, I'm gonna put the, everything in the same direction. So, all right, so we have our two sections that are um, exactly the same. All that happens later when they're sewn together is we turn, we rotate one um, around 180 degrees. 
So the next bit is we need to sew these sections together. So I'm going to flip, flip the first two around and see what we got going on here. Okay. So what I wanted to see is if there was anything we needed to match up. And there doesn't actually look like it. The only, the only points we need to match up, let me get the stiletto out here. Uh, we need to match up this point here with this point here. And then the other point that looks like it has to match is just this one and this one. So none of these other points uh, hit anything else in this design. Uh, so we do we do want to um, match those up though. So versus just like, ooh, putting these two edges together, I want to doubly check to make sure that those points are lined up. So I'm going to start out by putting them together. And actually, you know what? I might put a little dab of glue at the end of these because they're pretty floppy and I want to make sure that the points match. So I'm going to just quickly put a tiny dab of glue there. I think that's going to just help help me out, keep things in place. So I'm going to do it on this piece. And I don't always do this. I actually rarely do it. But when something's so floppy like this and I need to match it up, I think I think it's worth doing. Just kind of basting it in place. I'm going to do the same thing down here. And that will come right off later. Ugh, so everyone's face, so it must be Facebook then, because everyone's phones cannot be going kaput skis all at the same time, so. Uh, Facebook is having a week or something. I don't know. All right, I'm going to start with this bottom. So I'm going to put a pin right at that point that I want to match up. So like right there. Oop, I didn't push through. There we go. So right there, at that point, I want to match up. So with right sides together, I want to match it up to that other point right there. So I can kind of... I can kind of see through the papers there, there, right, right there. So I'm going to keep that pin there and then I'm going to do the same thing for this other side. You want to use as straight as pins as you can for this. Oh, you're fine on the Samsung. Oh, that's interesting. So maybe it's an iPhone plus Facebook thing. All right, there. We're matching up these points. You know what? I think I might also get some wonder clips out for this. Oops, lost some pins. So here are my little wonder, wonder uh, clips. So here we go. I got my points lined up. Now I just want to make that pin as straight as possible from every angle. So I don't want it, I don't want it angled like this because that means that one side is shifted over and those points won't line up. I'm gonna try and match it, you know, vertically and horizontally. And and the edge match up as best I can. And then oh I have some out right here. Then I'm gonna put a wonder clip right there. And actually, I think I'm going to sew from this. Well, no, we'll sew with this little littler piece on top. So, all right, I'm going to clip it right there. Then I can remove that pin. Let's do the same thing over here. It's heavy with the with the papers. All right, I think I'm going to call it right there. There, so now those points should be matched up. So you can see it, my little, I have a little point going um, off the edge there a little bit. That's fine. I'm worried about matching these inner points here. Yeah, you can uninstall. So if you go into your systems um, or your store, wherever you, wherever you download apps, um, go to the app in there or do a search for it, like for Facebook or whatever, and then 
click uninstall. Like if you click onto it, it should say, you already have this. Do you want to open it? Something like that. Or uninstall. Just click uninstall and it will go away from your phone. And then um, it should pop back on again. All right. Now I'm going to sew that quarter inch, which is also along this paper line here. So I'm going to kind of stick to that. I'm going to scooch this guy out of the way now. And I'm going to do my little back tack. At this point, I could probably get my, my leaders back in the game, but I'm going to stick to this. See how it goes. So at this corner here, I am going through tons of seams, so it might have a little trouble, but it, it seemed like it powered through there. Let's get the stiletto here to help me. Again, this, this machine seems so powerful, like it, it just wants to grab and pull everything real quick. I'm a little not used to it yet. All right. I think I'm going to just do this one section first to finish it, and then I'll do the other section versus doing both at the same time. Oh, see, your, your phone is blazing hot right now. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's, that's what's been going on with mine, too. And then it'll just completely conk out. I don't get it. It's being a dumb butt. That's what's happening. I did put the um, fan on, or the um, air back on, the air conditioning. So hopefully that helps. But all right, here's kind of that point that we are matching up, and it looks uh, like we did an okay job. Um, I guess there's not anything really to match up. Like visually, there's nothing. I think once we get the top and bottom pieces sections together, then we'll have um, that little point there that we're going to want to meet up, I think. Can't quite remember. I'm going to have to look at the design again. But uh, for right now, there we go. Kind of got all our papers going on here, too. Uh, let's get that second piece in here. So this is that a piece so we can put the right sides together there and again we want to match up points so I'm gonna put a little dab of glue on that part two just because it's floppy and I'm trying to match that point up you know I have not updated my phone yet either Betty and it and it keeps yelling at me too so maybe I'll um, do that when we're done here and then maybe that'll take care of the problem who knows I'm trying to, I'm still working on getting away from having to do this on the phone. So I'm going to do like camera stuff instead. So hopefully that will help. We'll see. Okay, let's do this last bit. So what I'm looking for is I'm, I want all the, I want everything to be upright. So, you know, I don't want like this B to be upside down. So, all right, there we go. All the letters are upright. Let's rotate it. That looks correct. All right, right sides together. Let's try and match up these top and bottom points again with our straightest pins we can find. All right. I think actually in this particular block, we could get away with just um, aligning our edges. I think we'd probably be okay, but it doesn't hurt to still try and line up these points, I think. All right, and seems like it's where this seam meets up about right there. And just about a little bit higher. There we go, now we're getting our points. There are a lot of papers going on here, so it's a little fumbly, but I think it's working. Grab my wonder clips again. Okay, got that guy. Let's get this straightened out. All right, looking good. All right, and let's make sure that middle 
the edges are still lined up. One more clip. Oh, here's my last clip. Okay, let's uh, sew along that edge and um, then this top section will be done. And we'll be ready to do that bottom section. We'll do that in the same way. Okay. Move that first little guy. Let out helping me a hair here. I'm not quite sure. I never measured um, where my quarter inch, scant quarter inch, was on this machine, so that was probably an error not to do that, but uh, we'll see how close we get here. All right, there's a top bit looking good. All right, I'm still going to leave these papers in for now. I'm going to wait till um, the top and bottom are sewn together before I get rid of those, I think, just so I can line up my points. But let's, uh, let's scooch over to here. Do you want to take the papers in the seams before sewing the two halves together. I I don't think I want to get rid of them yet because I'm going to want to see this point here. I'm going to want to match that up with uh, the point on, on this. I could probably get rid of this B piece, but at this point, I don't think I really need to bother taking that out. I could because because um, I don't want to sew it in completely, but it won't really be sewn in. I think it'll be fine. I'm just going to leave them all in for now. I think I'd be totally okay taking this B section out, but for right this moment, I'm going to let this just sit. Let's, let's just get this other half done first. But I think this is looking perfectly fine. So this will be one half, and then the other half will flip underneath like that. Okay, let's start from scratch again here. I, I am going to glue those little bits down. I think that's helping a ton, actually, just so everything kind of lays flat. It's helping me line things up a little easier. Same with these B points there. We'll, we'll remove those when we're done. So I might have been a little crooked there, but we'll be fine. Okay. Let's match some stuff up. So start here. Just double checking again that all my letters are the right direction. I should be fine, but I'm paranoid. All right, so that point matches that point. And this point matches this guy a little closer. That will do. Ooh, straighten all this out. I'm all over the place here. Okay, first let's get my glue went away, but that's okay. Right there looks good. All right, let's get this other side straight. Ooh. 
Yeah, I'm always worried about taking the papers out too soon, too. Specifically, um, because if I need to line up a point later and then I've gotten rid of it, then it gets just a little bit harder. All right. Oop, pin's still there. All right, there's our first bit. Let's sew that. We're almost there. Ooh, it's working hard here. It's going right through the seam with all of, it's where all the seams meet there. Like all these pieces of fabric are meeting right at the corner there. And that needle didn't want to push through, but it made it. Let's back up. Forgot about that. Eh, we'll be fine. Okay. There we go. Let's get that second piece on. That A piece. All right. Let's just kind of finger press this flat a little bit. Ooh, wow, yeah, there's a lot of bulk happening down here. It looks like I bunched up the fabric a little bit too, so that's going to make it even bulkier. Oh, well. Okay. There's the A section. So my glue kind of left a little bit, so I'm going to just kind of guess a little bit. There's my point. All right, first bit. We're about right there. Okay, that's looking good. Line up those edges, and then let's get this all straight here. Okay, looks good. Let's get this pin all straight. Paper is kind of in my way now here. As long as my pin is straight, then I'll be good to go. All right, and then this edge too. Oh no, Sally, that sucks. Are you throwing away all your pieces and then you have to find them again? <laughs> Yeah, I always think it's a little safer to have them all there, I suppose, yet. Okay. Going in the paper a little bit here, just because I'm trying to get that quarter inch allowance. I think my paper is kind of in the way at this point. Oh gosh, here I think I'm bunching up the fabric again. Well, luckily we'll be sewing that into something else really soon here, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. This is why my leaders, getting my leaders out would probably have been a little bit better. Oh, yes, Gretchen. So my schedule is a little different this week again. I know I've been, um, all summer early, my schedule has been not very consistent. So that'll change again in the fall, I'm, I'm guessing. But um, I am going to be 
out from Wednesday to Friday again uh, this week, um, visiting family again. They're, uh, they're in town a lot uh, this summer, so that's been nice. We've been trying to see them a lot. Uh, we are going to do, uh, uh, Nolene, we're going to do that, uh, I forget what the block is called, but we are going to work on, here it is, the shared squares block. There it is. It's more foundation paper piecing. It's on page uh, 121. And uh, next week, or not next week, but two weeks from now, uh, we'll be working on that block, but we are going to also do, I'm going to do a little bit of, of um, embroidery stuff. So I'm going to go over a couple stitches. So I will have, um, I will have some more on that coming up. Uh, but yeah, so it'll, but it'll be that block that, um, that with all those squares, the shared squares. All right. We have our two pieces here. They're looking pretty good. All right, let's flip them around. And I just want to take a double check at the block again. Just make sure we're matching everything up that we need to be. Yeah, because I don't think, yeah, these points don't actually, these blue points don't actually match up. Um, one stops here and one stops here. What matches up the most, it looks like, is, um, this seam line matches up with this seam line. And this seam line matches up with this seam line. And in that process, we also want these points, like this point to be really, really nice. So like, we want it to be like that where we get a really good sharp point and the same thing, the same thing here like that. So those are the things we're gonna be looking for um, this time around. So let's just uh, match them up again. Oh, I wonder if there's some instructions on what direction the seam allowance should go for this, because, oh gosh, I bet you it's flat, like open, because there's a lot of bulk here. Yep, okay, so here, here we are pressing the seams open. So actually maybe I will do that now. See right here, that means the pressing the seams open. So let's, Let's give that a go. Um, that will reduce some bulk. That will kind of trap this B piece in here a little bit, but we'll be able to pick it out, I think. Um, and I hate pressing with the pieces up, so I think I'm gonna actually flip them around a little bit. I'm gonna scooch this over. I'm gonna just finger press them flat, I think like that. Oh, I don't know if I want to do this because then I'm, it's going to be really hard to see my points that I need to match up as well. Oh, I suppose we can see it because where all these seams meet, that's what we need to match up. Yeah, so that's what we'll be going to. Oh yeah, see, so when I fold this open, I'm actually kind of seeing seeing the point right there like that little triangle that's happening. So that's the point I need to match up. So I'm gonna just press just a little bit on this side, just to get this really bulky parts down. There, and then I'm gonna flip it around to press flat, I think. Well, this paper is getting in my way here. This might not be the best idea. Uh, I think I'm going to have to do it with um, my paper side up, or at least maybe I'll get this these top little bits too. Once we take all the papers out, we'll do a, a better job at this pressing, so I'm not too concerned right now. Oh, Robin, I'm sorry to hear that. That's not good. All right, there we go. Now I think I got all these buggers flat. Let's squish them.
Oh, it looks nice all pressed flat too. There we go. There's our, our open seams and we can kind of see the points that we need to match up still. So that's, that's good. All right, let's do that with the other one. Oh, these little extra baby steps, I'm sure help quite a bit. All right, let's try and fold these guys open. Again, this is where it's so bulky. The machine's gonna be angry. Angry at me to try and sew through this, but that's, that's the name of the game here tonight. There we go. Oops, sorry, I hit your, um, hit you guys there. All right, let's try flipping these open. Flatten him a ton. All right, and then let's try and match these seams up. So again, we have a little like guide right here on the back, but I want them to match on the front. So right here, this point here and this point there, I'm guessing is what we're aiming for. And the same thing on, on this side, especially the, um, the, uh, this orange for sure. I wanna make sure that we go through. So, ooh, now here's the other thing. So this is gonna feel different. Um, we are going to be tilted at a goofy angle like this. So this whole matching these lines up are not, that's not going to be as easy as what we're used to, is it? So um, yeah, all right, this will be interesting. So let's get the pins. One spot for sure I know I need to start is right here. So let's, let's guess it's about right there. All right, perfect. That point, I suspect it's got to line up where these points match. Let's give that a try. Yep, right there. Okay, so that's one. Let's leave that. And now maybe we'll even do this one from this side to get that orange point again. Went a little too far over. Oh, now I'm a little too far up. Oh, I'm gonna lose this other pin. All right, I think I'm on it. Okay, match up with this point. I know this is a little goofy here. All right, I should have maybe gone in the same direction, but oh well. Let's try and first line up these edges a bit. And you know, we do actually have two other points to match up, they're these, the end tips that would probably actually be helpful, but let's, let's, um, let's just err on the side of our edges matching. So actually I'm gonna throw a clip in here just for now, just to keep it from rotating on me. And now let's attend to these. Again, I, I want these pins straight. And uh, um, not moving on me. All right, I think that's gonna be the best it's gonna get. Oh my gosh, it's so bulky. I'm 
scared for my machine. All right, let's clip that one. And then this one, let's straighten out as well. All right, clip that. Ooh, I got way off here though. All right, I think we're gonna leave those. And then let's try and match up these end bits um, as best we can. Another good just point of contact to have. All right. Helps me align, align this edge here. Straighten those out. So they'll probably not match perfectly and that's fine. We are at a weird angle, so weird triangle things do happen. Oh, I lost a clip. Grab a couple more. All right. And let's get that other edge. Oh, I have the clip right on here. All right. Straighten that. And again, it's not going to match up perfectly. All right, we are matched up here. You know, I think I might add another to keep these edges together. They're wanting to be a little wiggly, it looks like. So let's, let's see, this is an awful lot of pinning, but we're gonna go through a lot of bulk and um, hopefully this takes care of it for us. All right, last seam. Then all we have to do is take the papers out. And actually that will go pretty quickly, so I might actually still do that tonight yet, because how annoying would it be to leave the papers? Again, these are kind of aggressive um, feed dogs here, like they're really high. Which is kind of odd. Get my stiletto here. Okay, let's see how we do now. All right, let's remove that guy. We are getting up to this bulky part. I hope I do not um, I hope I don't break the needle here. Feller. I am kind of helping it along because there is a lot of bulk here. You can do it. Oh, it is just stuck there. Let's see if I can scooch it ahead kind of like a stitch worth. Ah. It's going through like there. Ugh, I'm just gonna have to help it along. It's going through just so much fabric right there. All right, it, it's still going. Come on. I'm turning the wheel. I'm trying to help it. All right, we're through, but dang, not happy with me. Um, Candace, this is actually the first time I've tacked the edges or the ends down, and it's really because I wanted to match up those points, and I couldn't really do that without um, tacking them down. So I've never done that before, but I kind of felt like I needed to in this case for just because they were pretty floppy. All right, let's let's see if this worked here. There was so much bulk in that middle that I, I really was trying to kind of jab this in there and trying to pull it along and I actually had to lift up the whole foot and kind of physically move it along a little bit 
And yeah, it's just a mess at the bottom. I think my feed dogs are grabbing pretty, pretty hard. Like, look, I can even see the feed dogs on, on the paper here quite a bit. Um, I think they might be up a little bit high. I bet you I can unscrew them somehow, but I'm, I still have to unlock it. They don't lower, so I still have to heat it up and grease it to unlock that. So that's a whole project, but um, it's something, I think it's just kind of tearing things up a little bit more. So I think they should be lowered a little bit, but let's peek. Oh, I think we're, we did kind of okay. Like we got that point there. These lines didn't match up perfect, but I think we got that point. And I think that other one's gonna be okay too. <laughs> we're gonna be, we're gonna be okay. How about that? Uh, so let's, um, I wanna just give this a quick press and then, then let's take the papers out. I wanna see what it looks like for real. I think we can kind of maybe form it a little bit. I suspect this is all pressed open too. Oh, it's so bulky. For now, I'm just going to, you know what? I'm not gonna press it. I'm gonna take all the papers out first, then we'll press. So I'm gonna just kind of pull on the diagonals a little bit here. And actually a lot of it is kind of separated already. So let's, let's just start pulling. So you do have to be careful still because you don't wanna tear out your stitches. Here's a few of the nice skinny tweezers would be helpful. And if you don't get all of the papers out, that's fine too. It looks like I could have done my stitch length a little closer together because it's not tearing as nicely as I would like. So it would have been helpful to have a few more perforation marks maybe. But there, I love this part because look at our perfect seam allowances. So even though we were cutting all those crazy big blobs, uh, because we were using the add a quarter ruler and everything, uh, we get our perfect seam allowances still. I, I love this method of foundation paper piecing. Uh, it's kind of like magic. So here's where it's gonna be difficult where we pressed all those seams open. We're gonna have little bits here and there, I think, but all in all, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, first area out. It is, foundation paper piecing is totally magic. If anyone saw this quilt or this um piece and they didn't know that foundation paper piecing is a thing, this is how I was before I knew it was a thing. I was like, oh, how do they cut out these such weird pieces and sew them together and have it look all perfect and amazing? Like, wow, those are master quilters, you know what I mean? Master piecers. But it was just this magic technique, you know? Woo, top's done. Oh, there's a little stuck in there. Okay, I'm pulling on the stitches a little bit more. Like they're not wanting to stay exactly, so. I don't know, I'm gonna have to check that machine out a little bit more. Play with it a little bit more, get used to the tension a little bit more. It's a new to me machine still. Come on. Still trying to be careful. I don't want to pull any of the seams out. Sometimes if you pull out an angle, it'll release the papers a little bit. Oh, we got some bulk down in here, but I might just leave that. That'll, a few washes and that'll all dissolve, I'm thinking. 
this B is hidden in here. Imagine if you had a whole quilt that you pieced and you had to take all these little pieces of paper out. Almost done. A couple of little jobbies hanging around. Okay, so let me just double check real quick that we are pressing open. I suspect we are. Yes, so the seams are pressed open. And again, that seam is pretty typical. I'm going to just shush this to the side. Let's just, I'm going to leave that actually on there and I'll carry that right to the garbage. Um, show me this over here. Whenever there's this much bulk. Oh, I missed a section here. Uh, it seems like um, designers want you to press it open. Oh, you just finished the country star block. Lots of little pieces of paper in it. Oh, <laughs> I always think it's fun. Sometimes you'll find um, vintage quilts, like a vintage quilt top that still has all the little pieces of paper. And it's kind of neat because it's like little newspaper bits. Like there's a history hidden in there. Yeah, I'm going to leave that at that. Let's press this. I want to see it. All right, I'm going to just kind of try and finger press this for a sec. Ugh, in here it's going to be a nightmare. Actually, I might start there. I might just kind of fold all this open a little bit and squish down the iron right in the middle there. Try and get all these seams open. These seams need to be open too. So this is something we're gonna have to remember when we quilt this, that it's probably not the best idea to try and quilt right in the center there since it's so thick that like the machine won't even go through it really. But it looks like we got it all open here. All right, let's flip it. Let's see. Okay. Not too shabby. I mean, it's definitely hanging on in the middle there. I got some loose kind of looking stitches in here, but I think, you know, once we're all quilted, it'll be fine. I'm happy with, uh, with this point there. That looks good, though. That's actually not too bad either. That's kind of my biggest deal was like, ooh, I, I want these to look like points still. I think if we just kind of pull it a diagonal a little bit, it'll feel good. All right, I want to really squish this now. just want to make sure that I'm still flat. There's just so much bulk here. And there's a lot of... Um, things cut on the bias here so it's wanting to stretch and move around in lots of different ways too but once we get this into the quilt um, that'll take care of all of that Ugh, squish <laughs> this is one of those um pieces where someone would take an actual mallet and hammer the seams down uh, <laughs> I don't have a mallet for that but I always I always think about that that is an actual thing that people do is hammer down these these uh, bulky, bulky, bulky areas. But there we go, I'm really happy with that. Uh, I'm just, just out of curiosity. I like getting the ruler out. Oh my gosh, we are quite a bit larger. That is interesting. Why would that be? Um, this is bigger than I thought, unless it was made to be bigger, but that seems pretty odd. Especially with paper piecing, it you usually end up being like just exact. So so anyway, well, 
We'll have a little bit extra for when we quilt it. So I suppose nothing wrong with that. That was really goofy though. That was a lot bigger than it should be, I think. One little last squish. In theory, it should have ended up being exactly uh, six and a half inches. I need one of those little hammers, don't I? <laughs> yep, definitely better to be over than under from the standpoint of sewing it in, into the quilt, but that's odd because with foundation paper piecing, you should be just like exact because you're right on the paper there. Um, what that probably means is maybe I made these seams kind of small, but all of our stuff matched up still, so I don't know. Let me know if your yours, uh, all of your guys' ended up being a little bit bigger too. But yeah, I think it turned out pretty cute. All right, you guys, that is it. I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll take a look at this and call it an evening here. Oh, Kathy says it looks so perfect. Thanks. So a lot of that, well, let me get you situated. Um, I think a lot of that comes from all of that pinning that we did in this, in this last little bit. Like, so everything we did today, I think is where, uh, the points looking good. I think, I think that's coming from today, like really taking that pin, finding that point, putting it in that other point on the other side and really making that pin straight. That is the real trick, I think. Um, the final finessing of a foundation paper pieced block. It looks better from far away. <laughs> the points look better. Uh, this, this strip looks better. Um, up close, up close, it starts to look a little wonky, but I like it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so thanks again, you guys. We finished this this one. It was taking a little bit uh, a little bit of time, and we didn't conk out in the middle either. <laughs> Our phone didn't completely uh, overheat, so that's that's good. Uh, I guess I need to put the air conditioning on every night and have it blowing on it. That seemed to work. <laughs> All right. So I will be here tomorrow. Uh, when we'll start that other block, uh, we'll do all the prep work for it at least. Uh, and then again, I'm not going to be back here till Monday probably. Uh, so I'll be here on Monday and I may pop in later in the week, at least to show you my brother's quilt. I want to see how far he got on that. He's been working on his own quilt every night in the evenings, uh, just like how we're doing here. So, uh, I think he's, I, I got a pit, picture sent of it to, uh, today of him putting on the binding it looked like. <laughs> so crazy. I'm just stoked to see it. So yeah, so I will be in and out. Um, I'll be on social media a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'll be back on Monday then. Oh, after tomorrow. So I'm still going to be here tomorrow. Uh, but awesome, you guys. Thanks again for joining me. And I will get this up on YouTube if you want to see the rest of it to really get those points. And I'll see you tomorrow. So have a good evening. Good night.